Okay, so this is the first uh, episode on this YouTube channel where I just talk about my experience and journey and things that I try out with film photography. Film photography has gained a lot of popularity over the past few years, and so it's something that I've been really interested in for a long time. It's where I started my uh, career way back in high school in the darkroom, and from there, it's kind of branched out into all the different things that I've done for work. With this being the first video on this channel, I wanted to talk about what would be an ideal first camera for someone that is just interested in um, film photography or somebody that's moving from digital photography. A lot of the options, and there are a lot of options, film photography has been around for so long that you know manufacturers have made tons and tons of different cameras, but they're not really being marketed today, which means it's really hard to get information or detailed information as to what would be a good first buy or um, why you know this camera or that camera might be ideal for you. So I think the Yashica FX3 Super 2000 is an excellent first choice for someone that is just getting into film photography. In my opinion, the most ideal first camera is this style of simple SLRs. Um, you know, Nikon has them, uh, Pentax has them, every manufacturer, Canon has them, and they're all very, very famous cameras. For this video, we're just gonna highlight some of the features of the Yashica FX3 Super 2000, and hopefully it's something that helps people understand if this is the right camera for them. For me, it's the build and design. The Yashica FX3 Super 2000 features a compact and sturdy design, primarily with metal components. It's known for durability and ergonomic handling, so everything is kind of where you'd expect it to be, and there aren't really a lot of things in the way that you might accidentally engage and not notice that will really impact the result, making it a reliable tool for people that are just starting out. So you have a film advance lever right next to the shutter release button and the dial to select the shutter speed or ISO if you lift up. Then there's a frame counter on that side as well. Anything that you actually need to read or see is in one area for you to find. On the same side, you have the lens lock release button and the timer. On the other side of the body, you just have the film rewind knob and that's it. It also includes a split image focusing aid. It's very easy to manual focus this camera. You'll know right away if it's in focus or out of focus. It's a very simple camera and it's small and minimalistic. So if you're a street photographer, um, this is something that's just about the size of a point and shoot. Um, aside from the lens itself, which this is the 50 millimeter that Yashica made for these cameras, it's fairly small, um, but this is the only thing that kind of extends out of the body. Um, and makes it slightly bigger than a point and shoot. Finally, this is a collectible item. They don't make any more of those. Why wouldn't you have one? It's at a price point that people could get. A lot of people that are getting into film photography are also gearheads and they like to collect things. Just like you like to document scenes and experiences with film, it means that you like to hold on to things and uh, what a great time capsule to hold on to. Enough talking about this camera. I went out and shot with it the other week and I'm gonna share my experience uh, there and we're gonna run through some pictures and that's gonna be the format of these uh, videos moving forward and see how it goes. So I took it out to a nearby equestrian park um, where people ride mountain bikes horses. I ride by this place all the time. It's part of my local uh, mountain bike trail. I run past it a lot too. I wanted to go there and take a few pictures of old silos and just scenes that I thought could be interesting to document. And immediately when I was loading the film, I remembered how nostalgic this was for me. It reminded me of high school days, just the sounds and the clicks. The sun was still a little bit hot and there's a silo next to these bleachers that I've always thought there's, there's something there, for me at least. And uh, I took a couple of pictures of it from different angles as well. I enjoyed not really having a lot of options when it came to this camera. I thought this scene of these cones was interesting, the way these directional lines go across the frame like this diagonally and the way the light was hitting that fence and gradually fading away to the left there. 
when the sun went down a little bit, went back and shot the silo and the bleachers. Thinking about this camera, I started remembering some of the fundamentals of composition that I was taught in high school. And one of them was frame within a frame. And what is a uh, less obvious take on that through these fences here? I've always thought the red color of the shed against the green during this time of year was interesting. So I wanted to capture that. Overall, it was just relaxing to shoot. I don't think there were a lot of opportunities to get unique scenes for one role, but I ended up just kind of bracketing a few, trying a few different things with focus and compositions on the same scene. Maybe to some people this is a waste, but this is sometimes how I like to shoot, and sometimes I'm a little bit more conservative. So key points we talked about today, why is this camera a great first camera? It's really simple, it's really affordable, it's minimalistic, allows you to really just understand what it is that you are doing um, when you get the results back, you can easily remember what you did. Are there better SLRs out there with great features such as autofocus and all kinds of uh, things that help you be more efficient or uh, they're more robust and you can just drag them through the sand and dirt and they're still gonna function. Yes, there are cameras that are just as good and robust as modern DSLRs today. And they're awesome, right? But why am I recommending something that is so simple and uh, somewhat entry level? It's really one reason, slowing down. Whether you're just starting or if you're moving from digital to film, slowing down and thinking about what you are doing is gonna be really, really important. And if you have less settings to deal with, just the basic fundamental settings, you're gonna be able to just check things off the list and have a quick little rundown of like why I'm making these decisions the way I'm making them. So if this video was helpful, um, or if you want to talk about anything else regarding this camera, or if I missed something, uh, if you have this camera and you wanna talk about it, Let's start a discussion below and uh, I'm really excited to kind of kick things off with this video and see where things go uh, and hear, hear people's thoughts about what their first cameras were. I wanted to thank you for sitting through this and enjoying it if you got to this part. Uh, I'm hoping to put out a video once a week. Uh, it might be a little bit slower at first, but we'll see. So please like and, and subscribe and send this around to your friends that you know, uh, love or are interested in getting into film photography.